Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today we're talking about a very funny incident from the very end of 2020. What happened, why it's funny, and more importantly, why it matters in the bigger picture of what creationists do and don't do, and what that means for pushing back against them successfully. And also, I just want to tell this story for anyone who hasn't heard it, because it's genuinely hilarious. And this happened back in 2020, when this was a way smaller channel. So there's a pretty good chance that a bunch of people who regularly watch my videos have no idea this ever happened, even though you're aware of the main person involved. So this story concerns Matt Naylor, aka Raw Matt, one member of the Brain Trust at Standing for Truth Ministries, an amateur Young Earth creationist YouTube channel. Raw Matt is, among other things, a former MMA fighter, raw honey enthusiast, look that up, wannabe Christian health influencer with self-published books like Biblical Vitality, and a former breatharian, also look that up if you've never heard of it. Now, he's an amateur YouTube debate bro creationist on a second-rate Young Earth channel that churns out AI slop and recycles arguments almost word for word going back literally five years at least. Until he was banned from YouTube for what I believe is the fourth time, Standing for Truth Ministries also frequently hosted, and I will say hero-worshipped, convicted domestic abuser Kent Hovind, but as of this recording no longer do so, as I understand, not in some belated recognition that you shouldn't host convicted domestic abusers, but to avoid any consequences for facilitating ban evasion. Now, the real story we're talking about here happened in 2020. Some point in 2020, a paper by Rawmat appeared on the internet. There it is. It appeared as a Google Doc, to be specific. And this paper, by all appearances, was being claimed by Rawmat to have been published in PLOS Biology, a legitimate and highly reputable peer-reviewed journal. PLOS stands for Public Library of Science. It's a nonprofit dedicated to making scientific papers accessible to the public. This is a real journal with real peer review. Any creationist publishing a paper in PLOS Biology that supported Young Earth creationism with data to back it up would be fairly groundbreaking. For some random YouTube debate bro who at one point thought you didn't have to eat food in order to survive to do so would be astonishing. But as you can see, the document had a DOI number and everything, it had the PLOS logo on top. So of course, when it came to the attention of myself, a bunch of other anti-pseudoscience creators on YouTube, you know, a bunch of the science friends looked into this. This happened in December of 2020. We all looked into this. What in the world? Was there this creationist paper published in PLOS? Of course, it was fraudulent, basically. None of this was real. It hadn't been published in PLOS. It hadn't been published anywhere. It hadn't been peer-reviewed. I mean, of course it hadn't. It's amateur hour. It literally contains screenshots from Wikipedia with the blue hyperlinks and everything, and a grand total of two incorrectly formatted references at the bottom. So of course this was fake. This is not a real thing that was actually published. When Rawmat was called on this, he first edited the document to remove the logo and then later went back and removed the DOI as well. But the internet is forever, and I saved a copy of the original, which is what you see here. That's what it looks like before the edits. Okay, so this is all funny in and of itself, right? We can laugh at Raw Matt for being a dishonest hack who tried to pass off his ramblings as a real paper that was published in a real journal. Honestly, reading this again as I was preparing for this video, I can see why they now use AI to write all their stuff. I totally get it now. It's still cringe and they shouldn't do it, but I totally understand why they do it. That's all fun and games. The more important thing I want to talk about, more important than any of that, is how this incident is a great example of a bigger problem with young earth creationism. And that problem is that they think going through the motions of science, giving the appearance of doing science, is as good as actually doing it. Write a real paper? Collect real data? No need. Just make an argument, format it the way you think a real paper looks, in this case hilariously wrong, but that's beside the point, and you could even slap a logo on it, call it good. That's all you need to do. Then, if you are really motivated, you can go the extra mile and you can publish it in one of the creationist journals where, 
Again, you can go through the motions of peer review without actually doing it. Remember, the whole point of the peer review process is to subject your ideas to actual scrutiny and criticism. People who are experts in the thing you're talking about are going to evaluate their work. And if they find errors, you're going to have to fix those errors. Creationists aren't doing that, and they're not interested in doing that. They have their own hermetically sealed ecosystems, completely divorced from the actual scientific community. No outside expertise needed, thank you very much. I'm making fun of raw mat here. But people like Dr. Nathaniel Jensen from Answers in Genesis, who, let us all remember, has a completely legitimate PhD from Harvard, basically does the same thing. He doesn't collect his own data, he just reinterprets, by which I mean misuses data collected and published by other people. And he's really blatant about it, too, but that shouldn't be a surprise. He told us he was going to do it this way. When he got hired straight out of Harvard by the Institute for Creation Research, he said, this is a direct quote, you could see it on screen, I asked myself, how can I use and abuse my training to influence eternity rather than for temporary gain? He then, very predictably, goes on to misrepresent research findings, misrepresent data collected by other people, and employ what can be very politely described as questionable computational methods to reach his conclusions. And I'm pointing this out because I want you, anyone watching this who at any point ends up arguing with or about creationism, I want you to call them on this. You think about all the major creationist arguments, the recent dates for mitochondrial Eve, genetic entropy, irreducible complexity, whatever. All of these have been published in books, and in fake creationist journals. None of them have been peer-reviewed. Take Jensen and his calculations for the date of the mitochondrial and the Y chromosome most recent common ancestors. Jensen does some really terrible math. I've talked about it at length here, and he blatantly misuses data, even when the authors who collected and analyzed those same data say, like, you are misusing our data. It's not appropriate for the thing you're doing with it. Right? That work that he does to try to calculate a most recent mitochondrial ancestor in the 6,000 years ago range, that work has appeared in books, and it's appeared in the Answers Research Journal, the in-house Answers in Genesis blog cosplaying as a peer-reviewed journal. None of it was evaluated by real biologists doing that work for real before it was published. None of it has been peer-reviewed. So when creationists use those articles written by Nathaniel Jensen call them on it. Say, why are you giving me this nonsense? This has never gone through the peer review process. No experts in this field have actually evaluated Jensen's work. And you can go one step further. In many cases, there are actual peer reviewed papers that directly refute the young earth arguments. There are stacks of papers showing an old date for the mitochondrial most recent common ancestor. Dates that land you in the 100 to 200,000 year range way outside of the Young Earth timeline. Many of those papers involve the methodology that creationists say they want you to use. They involve direct measurements using pedigrees. Direct observations? Old Earth numbers. When you encounter creationists citing Jensen's work, you can correctly point out that his calculations have never been peer-reviewed, unlike the numerous pedigree studies that directly contradict them. I did a long video on this uh, at some point in the past. I'm going to link that down below so you can check out all of those other pedigree studies. Here's another example of this exact same thing. I co-authored a paper that was published in 2024 with Dr. Zach Hancock. His channel and the paper are linked down below. If you're not already subscribed to Zach, you should do that right now. This paper directly refutes the young earth creationist concept of genetic entropy. And to date, as I record this video in October of 2025, no creationists have even tried to respond to that paper. Not a single one. So anytime a creationist brings up genetic entropy or genetic degeneration or whatever term they want to use, give them that 2024 paper, call it good. Don't budge from the position that it's been disproven and nobody has even tried to respond. That works because they are unable 
to respond in kind. It's antithetical to their entire pursuit, because creationism isn't about doing science. It's about sounding persuasive to a non-scientific audience and giving just enough cover that Christian nationalist politicians can impose creationism on public school students. It's part of the broader Christian nationalist movement in the United States, and importantly, it always has been. I want to be clear about that. Creationism, creation science, intelligent design, whatever name they want to slap on it, has always, from the beginning, been a facade for the broader Christian nationalist political project. And that means they don't need to do science. They just need to look like they do science. So let's take a moment to laugh at Ramat, and I honestly, to this day, still can't believe he calls himself Raw Matt. Some of you watching this may remember the attempted rebrand to Matman, as in Batman, but as far as I can tell, that didn't really take hold, and we're back to Raw Matt. But I also want us to all remember that the fake PLOS paper is the quintessential expression of how creationism writ large approaches science, not as a process for challenging ideas and producing knowledge but as a series of steps one must appear to follow to accomplish their political goals. Winning the debate about the science is only part of what we need to do when we're pushing back against young earth creationists or intelligent design proponents or whatever they want to call themselves, because again, it's all part of the same project. Winning on the science is only part of the fight because that isn't all the creationists care about. It isn't even most of what they care about. It's just the window dressing. Always remember that and act accordingly. Thank you for watching. Please remember, if you enjoyed this video, to hit the like button. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button. I don't care. It's all the same to the algorithm. Please just hit one of the buttons. Leave a comment. Share this video. And if you really like what I do here and want to support me, consider becoming a channel member. Thank you all again for watching, and don't get fooled.